A uh, quick disclosure, um, if you want to see the videos and pictures that I took with this camera, skip to the end of the video. Um, if you want to see the review, stay tuned. The um, videos and picture samples that I took with this are going to come after my review. So I will have that uh, time stamped down below in the description. So if you want to skip to seeing what the pictures and videos look like on this thing, um, you can go ahead and skip to that time. But uh, if you stay tuned right now, the first thing that's going to come up is my review of this thing. So, thanks for watching. Okay, the Dell restoration video I've been working on for what feels like forever is taking longer than expected. So, in the meantime, I wanted to make a video reviewing this camera that I picked up at Goodwill for $3. This is the camera in question. This is the Kodak EasyShare C195. Uh, now, you might be thinking to yourself, $3 at a Goodwill for a camera, that seems pretty cheap. And you would be correct. Uh, I think the reason why this camera, I found it for so cheap at a Goodwill, I'm pretty sure either the previous owner or the people at Goodwill who are testing it probably thought it was broken. And I will show you why they probably thought that in a second. Um, so a little bit of this camera, I actually could not find a whole lot of data on this camera. I know it was released sometime uh, between 2010 and 2012. Uh, Kodak had a whole lineup of these little easy share cameras, um, so pinpointing the date was really kind of difficult. There are no really real reviews on this thing at the time, not a whole lot of advertising, not really much to go off of. So between 2010 and 2012, kind of right before smartphones started taking hold in, in um, media, social media use, uh, and then as terms of how much it cost when it came out, I found a couple Amazon listings. I could not find the original MSRP anywhere I looked. But I did find a couple really old Amazon listings, and it looks like this thing retailed for between $120 and $200, depending on what it was selling for on Amazon. But honestly, I, I really, that's the best I can do. So it's, it's all very vague because it was not a really big thing when it came out. So the whole point of these easy share cameras is basically Kodak thought that it, they kind of saw the writing on the wall and they saw how popular social media was becoming. And you can see uh, on here we have Facebook, YouTube, Flickr. I have, I don't think I've heard of Flickr before, maybe. Um, but uh, all these uh, social media uh, uh, platforms on the sticker here, Kodak saw that and was like, we need to make a camera that's kind of tailored to this. Now again, this was before smartphones started taking hold. So the idea was that you would use this camera and then you could do either wired or wireless. Uh, you could connect to this uh, software, this special Kodak software, that would basically hook into all of these social media platforms and it would kind of give you this little central hub where you could like take your pictures and I think you could do some edits on them and spruce them up a little bit and then post them to whatever social media that you wanted. So like you could you take some pictures with your friends at the beach and um, you know put them on this little hub, edit them a little bit, and then put them on Facebook. And it's a pretty cool idea. Now, uh, I was not able to find a working download for the software. It is obviously discontinued. It's been over a decade. Um, so I couldn't find a working download. I don't think it actually is compatible with Windows 10, which is what my computer uses. I'm pretty sure it was only meant for like Windows 7. Uh, I don't even think they ported it over to 8, let alone 10. So uh, the software is long gone. I did find some pictures of it though, and I'll, I'll have these uh, pictures uh, in the video uh, for you to take a look at. Um, it's pretty neat. It's a pretty, pretty neat idea. It's kind of obvious to see why this didn't really continue and why they stopped making these. And that was because eventually smartphones would get so sophisticated and you could snap a picture edit it on your iPhone, and then upload it to Facebook within the span of, you know, a couple minutes. You didn't need to, you know, fiddle with an SD card, plugging it into a PC and editing and all that stuff. You could do everything from your phone wirelessly. So, I mean, yeah, it's not hard to see why this thing did not uh, continue into, into the modern world. But it is pretty cool to see this kind of relic of, you know, when social media was taking off, and before smartphones really kind of took hold, that, that little period of the early 2010s, it's, a, it's really cool to kind of go back and see what that was like. 
So I found this for three bucks at uh, at Goodwill, but let's do kind of a quick little overview of it. So uh, on the top here, we have our uh, shutter button. We have the zoom. Now, if you can see this, the um oh see there you go. It gets you see how it's stuck. Yeah, you see it kind of gets yeah. It's really kind of finicky. The zoom here. I'm pretty sure I could fix it if I filed down some of the plastic and lubed it up. I'm pretty sure I could fix it, but I just don't really want to take it apart right now. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of one of the reasons why I think it's broken. The other one, I'll show you once we turn it on. Uh, we have a flash button right here to control the flash on the camera. This controls the shooting mode, so you can go into um, uh, photo mode or video mode. There are a couple other modes that I'll, I'll show off. And then we have our on off button. Now, um, we have our screen here. We'll actually come look at these once we turn it on. Uh, the share button is actually pretty interesting. On the bottom, we actually do have a mount for a tripod, which is pretty cool. I didn't think that I'd see it on one that's this, this cheap. And then, um, what I really like about this camera, uh, that makes it kind of a cool option if you want to just take it around on a trip as a point and shoot, is if you open it up, you see it takes two double A's and it takes a SD card, normal sized, full size SD card, which is pretty dope. So if you're going to like another country and you, you know, forgot your battery wall charger or whatever, just throw some double A's in there. You can get rechargeable double A's, throw them in there and uh, you're good to go. So that's pretty, pretty nifty, pretty, pretty cool. Um, here, <laughs> I don't know if you can see this. On the side here, we actually have a micro USB port. Now this is in all likelihood what it, took to um, connect this thing to a computer to transfer the images um, and you can actually once we you plug this into the computer you would use the Kodak software to program certain functionalities on here now I don't know if you it's picking up so well but if you can see in there the port is completely rusted I think someone might have left this outside at one point or got some kind of exposure but uh, all of the openings on this camera that are metal, like you can even see it on the screws here, there's rust. Like, see, look, there's rust on these. I don't know what have, what would have caused that unless this thing really, like dropped in something. If you open it up on the inside here, it's at, the inside's perfectly fine, but it's just the screws and the USB port are uh, rusty. I don't I don't know. It's gotten, it's seen some some weathering. Uh, so, but um, yeah, that's pretty pretty neat. Um, unfortunately, it just kind of sucks that, you know, in the year 2023, half the functionality of this thing, what, you know, the whole selling point of this camera, uh, doesn't work anymore. It just doesn't exist. The software, you can't find it, at least I couldn't, and even if you could, it probably doesn't work. So, I mean, because, like, even if you could find a working copy of that software and get it up and running, sure, you could program your camera, but the APIs that it used to connect to, like, YouTube... Uh, Facebook, Flickr, all that stuff, those APIs are probably so outdated that it just doesn't work. So it, the, the functionality of this thing would be pretty limited. So as you can see right here, um, it says 14 megapixels. Now, 14 megapixels is slightly misleading, and I will show you why in a second, but um, that is the theoretical maximum of what we can take with this camera. Got your flash, got your, got your shutter, all that good stuff. So um, that's kind of an overview on the outside of the camera. It came with this um, strap, and then it also came with a second elongated one, which just makes this thing ridiculously long if you wanted to wear it as a necklace, I guess. That's what people do, right? Some people will have necklace straps for big cameras, so I guess if you wanted to do that with this, that's kind of cute, I guess. <laughs> I don't I don't know. All right, so uh, by pressing the on button, you can turn it on. Uh, set date and time, that shows up because I put in a new SD card in here. Um, so to start off with, you gotta have to select what mode that you want to shoot in and that's where this top button comes in so if we press the top button it's going to let us choose we can do smart capture we can go to video program scenes which is just a specific type of uh, photo that just kind of tailors the settings to whatever the the situation is um, and then we loop back to smart capture so smart capture is just it you take normal photos and the camera will adjust the settings accordingly. Um, scenes is more like the same thing, but basically just for photography. So like if you wanted to, it says it right here. It gives a brief little description of what all these are. 
Um, you can use it for full frame photos of people and other subjects. Um, there's program, which is also still images, but you can actually set some manual settings. Uh, and then there's video. The video is very limited on what it's capable of. Um, and uh, we'll get to that in a second. But um, so let's kind of explore some of these settings. Oh, so um, these buttons on the side here. So we have, this is the settings button. This is what, um, well, we have to select a, uh, let's just go to smart capture. So this is our settings where we can set, we can go to setup, uh, set our date and time, and then these are some capture settings where we can set our image size, sub timer, keyboard. Um, now, one of the reasons why I think they thought this thing was broken, you see how the, you use the, um, the thumb pad here to select your um, direction? Well, look at this. Right does not work. You have to use left, and it does kind of roll over, so you can use it that way. But, like, for some of the settings, like, if I wanted to do, um, if I wanted to adjust the, the pixel, the um, megapixel, you, I want to go right, I can't do that. I can go down, I cannot go up. But what I can do is select it and go up and down. So it doesn't take away from the functionality, it's just a little inconvenient. So one of the reasons why I said the 14 megapixel um, version was a little bit misleading is because, as you can see, you're limited to a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, and then you can change aspect ratios, but the, the pixel density is going to go down as well. So what I was really surprised with when I first saw this camera, look at that. You can actually shoot in widescreen. You can shoot 16 by 9, which is really cool. And you can actually go all the way down to 1 megapixel. I actually took a couple photos on that. We'll, we'll talk about them in a second. Um, so that exits out of that. Um, uh, then you can hit play down here to go through all the photos. These are just some photos that I took um, while I was out. Info just kind of shows you, like, when the photo was taken, which... I think this camera is set to like 2013, 2014, so it's not going to be accurate uh, unless I configure the settings, but it just shows you information about the camera. Actually, if we edit out of this, um, actually, you hit play to exit out of the viewer, and then uh, info just actually tells you a little bit about the camera. Um, so it shows you like what your settings are, but you can also um, see what like your firmware version is and everything, and then if you want to look at that, you can go into delete, and it allows you to uh, get rid of that. So, um, pretty neat. Um, the, uh, the share button is what I really wanted to call your attention to. So, hitting the share button, basically it takes you to your images and it shows you what do you want to share to. And you see it has the, um, the um, social media platforms that this thing supports. So, Kodak Gallery. Kodak had their own little media center uh, at some point. Facebook, Flickr, Orcut. I didn't know that. You can also hook it up to like um, an email address, which is pretty neat. And you can also configure it to uh, the share button to share to whatever you wanted to. So if you want to go to YouTube, you can, I guess, email it to yourself, picture frames. So you could like theoretically sync this thing up to like one of those digital picture frames. That'd be kind of cool. Um, so yeah, there's actually kind of a lot of functionality in here, which I'm pretty amazed by. But um, as you can see, since we're in the, um, the smart capture settings, there's just not a lot of settings uh, to, me to, mesh to mess with. So what you do is you go down here and you go to program and even though it's still pretty basic, this does give you some more settings to fool around with. So we can set our uh, picture size as usual. I'm gonna keep it at 14 just because that's the highest, but you can also do exposure. Now this camera does record and capture pictures pretty dark so I do have it at uh, 0.3 just to compensate for the, the low light a little bit, just to get rid of some of that grain and to have it um, be a little bit more bright because the default is really bad. ISO speed, I just left that to auto. Self timer. Color mode is pretty cool. It's just kind of, it's color mode, I don't know why it's called that. It's another word for saturation. Uh, I think the reason why it, it got renamed is because what you guys have to understand is that this is targeted for like, teens and young adults. This is just like, this is not obviously a camera meant for content creation. This is for teens and young adults to go take to the beach and take some selfies with their friends. This is not, you know, a, a creator's type of camera, but uh, the color mode is just another word for saturation. Uh, white balance basically lets you select between a bunch of different filters. 
you can kind of think of these white balance settings as Instagram filters. Open shade is kind of like a little bit yellower. Uh, auto will auto select. Daylight is just a bright. Uh, tungsten is blue and then fluorescent is like a white background. So I kept it at open shade because I wanted to go for that kind of like retro old school type of feel and it actually does a pretty good job of that. Uh, it does have an autofocus. It's a slow autofocus, but it has one. Um, you can change your focus exposure settings, uh, autofocus control, um, and then you can do sharpness, which I just set normal. So it's pretty cool. Um, now I did do some images that I'm gonna go uh, show you guys uh, in a second, but um, it's actually pretty cool. Now obviously it, it's very clear what this thing is, right? It's obviously, it's a, you know, it's not a type of camera that is meant for, you know, content creation, right? This is not the kind of camera that you're gonna buy to be a photographer. It's, it really just kind of feels like a toy, right? This just kind of feels like the type of thing that, you know, like I said, you would give this to a teenager for a birthday present and they would take it and go, you know, take some pictures at the high school football game or take some pictures on spring break or, you know, whatever the case may be. It's, it's a very simplistic camera. And the whole selling point of it is that it can connect to this social media hub type thing and, you know, share your pictures and videos on all the social media sites which, since that software doesn't work anymore, the main selling point of this thing uh, kind of doesn't exist. But, you know, I found this for three bucks, but you could still realistically get this for like, you know, 15 bucks at like a thrift store if you look hard enough for it. So I think that um, in that respect, it's actually kind of cool. I mean, you could definitely like throw this thing into a suitcase and, you know, you could take this on a cruise ship. You could take some, some quick videos, some pictures, and definitely capture the moment I mean, obviously, your phone is going to be much better than whatever the heck this thing can provide. But, I mean, as a gift for a kid, I think it's pretty cool. Um, uh, if you wanted to, you know, mess around with these settings, it, I mean, I doubt nowadays, but it might provide some settings that a smartphone can't do. I, I can't imagine what that would be. But, you know, giving to someone to play around with, to, to you know, learn how cameras work and to learn how to, you know, snap some, some interesting shots... I think it's pretty cool. I mean, it's a, it's definitely a cool burner camera if you don't want to risk dropping your phone in a lake or something or, or you know, damaging your phone in some way. This thing is going to cost about as much as a McDonald's meal, so, you know, you may as well ruin the cheap thing uh, rather, rather than your cell phone. But, yeah, I think it's uh, it's pretty neat. Um, I uh, That's kind of all I really wanted to say. I mean, it's just kind of cool to see how such a simple camera, a simple design... Uh, was able to be, you know, marketed in a time where we didn't have, you know, smartphones that had a lot of, you know, built-in social media integration. And, you know, we had to actually uh, upload things manually like this. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, put in some music and show you guys the video and the pictures that I took with this thing. So you can get an idea of what this thing is capable of shooting. The uh, the LCD screen here, I gotta, <laughs> this is one other point that I gotta, I gotta mention that I experienced while shooting with this thing. This LCD screen is awful. It is god awful. So my, my, ba my main issue is that the resolution of this thing, I think it's like 300 by 150 or something like that. Maybe 300 by 100, I don't know. It's awful. So my, my problem is, if you take a picture and you look at it on this LCD, y it has no way of indicating what the picture looks like because the resolution on this thing is so crappy. So what you have to do is basically hope that you took a good uh, picture and then go um, put it on the computer to look at it and just hope that it turned out okay. It's kind of it's kind of awful. And when you so I'm gonna do a demonstration here. So oh yeah, I guess it's on auto flash. You can actually turn that off. But um, one of the things that um, I noticed while using this camera is that the shutter speed is really slow, and it has very little, almost non-existent stabilization. So what that means is that with the sh slow shutter speed, this thing is going to be very sensitive to movement. 
So if you move this thing around a lot, your photo is going to get blurry because it doesn't have the ability to stabilize, at least not very well. So you basically have to hold this thing perfectly still. So like if you try to do some shots with one hand, it's not going to work. It's going to come out a blurry mess because this you, you, you can't stabilize it very well with one hand. It's going to tilt a little bit. So it's just really, oh, I guess the battery is dead now. But um, yeah, the, the slow shutter is going to make your, your photos very blurry. And the LCD doesn't indicate that very well. So you won't know until you go put it on your computer. So what you end up having to do is take like two or three pictures of the same thing and hope one of them turned out good and try to try your damnedest to keep this thing as still as possible. But, you know, again, I'm complaining about a, a more than 10 year old camera that was not high end when it was released that really is less of a camera and more of a toy. So, you know, take these criticisms with a grain of salt. It's super fun to play around with. You know, I know on TikTok there's this kind of trend of bringing back these old digicams to go for that more dated early 2000s aesthetic. And um, this is definitely capable of doing that. Uh, and I think that's really cool. So I actually have a couple of these that I've uh, found over the years and um, I've, I've gotten from friends and family who didn't want them anymore. So if you enjoyed this video of me taking a look at one of these old cameras, uh, let me know because I actually was thinking I might turn this into a little series. I got a couple of these that I wanted to take a look at and kind of, you know, see how they worked. Um, I think that would be kind of cool. So let me, let, me, let me know, let me know. Um, these are definitely some really cool budget options. They're very cheap. You know, if you, I mean, obviously I would recommend using your phone, but if you wanted to start shooting some video, if you wanted to get into some YouTube or something like that, one of these would definitely do the job, even though I think, uh, I think a phone would be better. But if you wanted to jump onto that TikTok trend of taking some, you know, pretty cool retro aesthetic photos for Instagram or something, one of these is really cool and it's a really cool little toy to play with. So yeah, let me know what you think. But um, thank you guys for watching. I'm going to turn on some music. And uh, if you want to see the um, if you want to see the, the videos and the images that I took, uh, stay tuned. But I'm going to show that right now. But uh, that's it for me reviewing this camera. Again, I thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And um, I'll see you next time. Okay, so what you're seeing right here is the video capability of the camera. Um, it is currently shooting at a resolution of 640 by 480 and nothing else. There is no settings in the camera whatsoever to change either the resolution of the video or the frame rate. So it's 640 by 480, that's all you get. I'm assuming that it's running at 30 frames or 24. 24 is pretty common for like a cinematic video and then 30 is just common so I assume that's that's what it's working with but uh, I won't know until I get back in and examine it on my computer but this is kind of what it would look like for vlogging obviously you don't have a viewfinder you don't have a flip up screen so you just gotta s look right into the sensor and hope that it's you're you're in frame and you're and you're fine. So this is what it looks like in a highlight condition. The sun is right right there, so it's shining directly on me. So I'm fully fully lit in natural sunlight right now. Um, and then if I turn around, it's going to be kind of overcast, so it should be casting kind of a shadow. So that's what it looks like in terms of. Um, kind of a human vlogging experience. The, um, the uh, sun actually does a pretty good job of compensating for this camera. What I found with shooting both video, not so much video, but, but definitely f um, images, is that this camera has a bad problem of shooting things very, very dark. So what I've noticed, a good um, solution for that is to basically, you can go into the camera if you go into the program settings and you can actually uh, crank the exposure. Um, so increasing that by, you can go in certain increments. I find that 0.3 or 0.7 is probably the sweet spot to compensate for the darkness because the camera shoots pictures very dark 
and on top of that the low light performance of this thing is virtually non-existent. If you shoot something and you don't have the subject perfectly lit, you are going to get some terrible blur and artifacting. It's just, it's, it's going to happen. So that's, uh, that's kind of the, the thing to keep in mind here. But yeah, this is just a quick video test of the Kodak EasyShare camera. And I am going to take some more pictures to test various settings with.